So today I want to talk about putting feelings and emotions into your music, into your playing. I think it's something that doesn't get discussed enough. If you go on YouTube, you can find amazing tutorials about piano, keyboard, all sorts of exercises. And let's face it, just about anything else you want to know about. But there's not so much on the emotional side of art and music. Um, but I think it's a very important side. Um, the music that we all come back to again and again is not usually the super technical, perfect things. It's the things that really tug at our heartstrings and gets you right there. Um, that's the magical thing about music, I guess, the emotive quality of it. It's an abstract subject, but I'm just going to try to share my approach to it um, and hopefully you can get something out of that. By the way, the sample that you heard on the intro is for sale at my website. Uh, the link is below. It goes into Logic and Contact Sampler. Um, it's a Yamaha upright piano, my one in my house, with the practice pedal on. And what that does is it puts a felt in between the hammer and the string, so you get this muffled sound. It's so you can practice quietly at night, but I find it quite a haunting, beautiful sound. So I multi-sampled it with three samples and it goes across the keyboard. Anyway, you can pick that up at my website if you like it. Also, this lesson will be for sale on there as well. Um, okay, let's get cracking. So if you listen to any of the musical greats from throughout music, olden days to now, it's as much what they don't play or sing as what they do that really can make an emotional impact, I think. Sense of space. You know, when you put space in music, you give a chance for notes to really resonate and then they can kind of tug your heartstrings. See there I'm playing mostly just softly and I'm leaving spaces sometimes. So you have that little pause and then when you hit something really make it count because it's suddenly got the spotlight on it. Because you've been silent, suddenly that little whatever you play is going to have more resonance than if you're just constantly playing. So I think space is a crucial element in being able to make people feel deep emotions, you know, sadness or yearning or whatever you're trying to communicate. Sometimes you can try and draw on how you're feeling. You know, if I have a really bad day, I sit at the piano for half an hour and just play whatever without thinking. And I generally feel better at the end of the half hour. There's something so cathartic about music. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. You know, you've got difficulties in your lives. You can sit down and play and forget about everything else for a while. And what I find is when I play the best is when I'm not thinking really and I'm just almost being the conduit to the emotion. You know, it's coming from whatever the great source is. It's coming through me. And I try not to think about it too much. I try to just let it flow and listen as I'm playing. And I can then just sort of direct gently where it's the most effectively, uh, where it's the most effective emotionally, if that makes any sense. So, you know, I'm trying not to think too much if I'm playing that sort of sensitive stuff. And you can hear sometimes I'm accenting, really exaggerating certain notes. Again, it evokes a emotional response when there's a sudden change in dynamic. You know, it's like hearing a sudden loud noise. You're like, oh, what's that? You know, and if you're hearing very quiet music and then suddenly there's a loud note, it sort of jars you and can make you feel something as well. And if it's done in the right way, it can be very effective. I'm sort of playing in fast moving clusters here, you know, which I find can be very effective for this kind of slightly romantic sort of sound. And it's really quite easy. You know, you can just play any note in the chord there where I'm playing. I'm in F minor at the moment. So I'm, I'm using almost all the extensions in F minor. The ninth, the eleventh, even this one here, thirteenth or uh, sixth, whatever you want to call it. 
And then when you know you can actually hit any of those notes, you don't really have to think about them much. It's, it's quite simple. You just have the sustain pedal on. And... You can really do them at random, you know, and then it's, it becomes more about the feeling than the, any sort of musical knowledge or your, your brain working. You just, you know you're in that chord and you can just flow. And try and listen to what tugs your own heartstrings. I find those sort of close cut clustery things can can sound really nice. Obviously, when you hit very quietly, it's all about the dynamics. Um, playing softly, then suddenly accenting a note and hitting it quite hard can really grab you. Also, fluctuating with tempo if you're playing. You know, so you can try and do something like you're doing an arpeggio and you speed up as you go into it and then you slow down towards the end of it so you're sort of staying fairly rooted in time. Um, that can, again, it's just the human feeling of it. You know, not a robot, everything's perfect, you don't feel anything. When you get in this ebbing and flowing, that's when you really start to feel something when someone plays. I don't know if you can feel that, that you're getting this feeling through the ebbing and flowing, dynamics, quiet, then hard, timing, fast, then slowing down. All these things are making you feel quite moody, you know. So that's the landscape that I sort of use when I want to play this kind of emotional style. I try not to think about it. I try to be just the conduit to whatever I'm feeling, either how I'm reacting to the music you know, if I'm playing someone else's music, I'm trying to put myself into that music, my, whatever my personality is, my feelings. You know, we all have a crap day sometimes and there's nothing better than sitting down at the piano for half an hour and just playing without thinking and letting it all out. You know, it just comes out and you feel better at the, at the end of the half hour. It's so cathartic music. That's one of the magical things about it. One of the things I love about it so much. And for the listener, it can be cathartic for them as well. You know, when they hear this kind of emotional outpouring, they can relate it to themselves and how they're feeling. Um, you know, I don't want to get into too much of a spiritual vibe about this, but there is something very spiritual about it, in my opinion. You know, music's got the power to heal people in that way. Um, so, you know, it's great if you know these little devices and then try to forget them almost. You incorporate them into your playing and then you just try to play without thinking once you've learned the idea of listening to the sound you're playing and what sound it's making and what how it's making you feel uh, that's the important thing you know because if you just you know just plod along then you don't feel anything but if you try to find the sweet parts of the sound And it's so sound dependent, you know, it, first of all, pick the right sound for the sort of vibe you want to get. You know, obviously I'm playing a piano stuff here. This is one of my own piano patches. It's very, very mellow because I want it for that mellow, gentle sound. Um, I wouldn't pick a very bright piano, for instance. You know, I'll go through a few sounds and show you how I would react to them differently. So let's say I was on a road sound. Um, it's about choosing the right sound for the vibe that you want. So I've got a mellow sort of sounding roads here. That can also be a more aggressive. It's good for a, a dynamic way of playing. Um, and the thing to do is like really try to listen to that sound and hear where the sweet points are. You know, if you're on a real piano, obviously it's easier, but even on these sampled instruments, they've got the, the velocity switching and different... <laughs> different sounds at different velocities. So you have to sort of try to make your playing dynamic fit the sound that you're playing, basically. It has to be different for every sound because it's how the sound re reacts to your um, 
touch response uh, that is going to make it sound good or bad. You can play the same thing, but if you're playing it with the right dynamic, it'll feel a hell of a lot better. And it's like great studio drummers. The amazing drummers that I've worked with are the ones that can play a different dynamic consistently depending on the room they're in and the kit they're playing. You know, it's not... When you start out as a drummer, you think, oh, you've, you've got to hit it as hard as I can. That's how you get the good sound. But actually, they hit it to just the right velocity for whatever the room is and whatever the track is. And that is incredibly difficult, actually. It's trying to find, okay, I'm going to play 70% velocity consistently for a whole track. That's really hard. Um, and that applies to keyboards as well. Um, just to be able to hit exactly the right velocity that's going to sound right on that sound. See there, I'm just trying to hit that particular vo velocity for that more skanky note that I want to ping out. Uh, same if I'm playing a real soft thing. See that real soft sample there is lovely. So it's about listening to the, the sounds and finding the sweet spot for what you're the part you're playing. Loud a sample, quieter one. I hope you can get the idea from that. Um, let's try some different sounds. Let's say you were on a an organ sound. You don't want to play it like you're playing a piano. So if I try and play that like a piano... Sounds horrible. Organs don't have a sustain pedal, so you can't use a sustain pedal. You've got to try and approach it like the instrument that it is. What's the appealing part about the sound? It's got a little nose at the front of it so you know you try to play to that strength okay there's a there's a percussive thing there you know if i was on a guitar sound spanish sort of guitar uh if i play it like a, again like a keyboard doesn't sound anything like a guitar because guitars can't do that so Let's try and approach it like a guitar. You'd have to strum it. That's what they do. Again, listening to the sample, where's the sweep spot? It's nice when it goes harder. You've got articulations on this thing that you can use, like a slide. Uh. And harmonics. probably still things you can't play on a guitar but at least it's got the vibe of a guitar